imagine sitting at the edge of the rock ledge and gaze down into the valley shrouded in a blue fog. Then close your eyes and when you open them, you stand in a huge cave where all the sounds of the surrounding jungle are multiplied. With another blink of an eye, you sit on a white beach, feel fine sand beneath your feet, and the light breeze plays in your hair. We welcome you to our next trail video, this time from Australia. Right from the beginning, let's admit, we didn't want to go there very much. Somehow we have always considered Australia as a country full of snakes, poisonous spiders, sharks and other creatures just waiting to eat us. Well, we simply written it off in advance, and so we went there just for a week, which was a huge mistake. By rented car, we traveled to New South Wales on the east coast. And we are almost here, landing at Sydney International Airport. Buckle up, we're leaving the metropolis and heading to the Blue Mountains National Park. Meet the first kakadu parrot we have met. Kakadus, like other parrots, are extremely curious and beautiful. They never hesitate to use their charm, especially when it comes to food. We have several of them here. We saw them at the first campsite spot behind Sydney. Almost every time we had an irresistible urge to little ruffle their tufts. <coughs> but that's not allowed. Here they pick some seeds off the ground. Woohoo! This seems like a serious fight. And roughing their fluffy tufts. Holy truthy! Right now we are in a stunning place called the National Park Blue Mountains. It is called so because the bushes here have kind of a bluish or grayish color. Thanks to eucalyptus trees which grow all around here. Finally we can have a cold shower from the waterfall. You can see the spectacular view right to the heart of the Blue Mountains. Maybe we'll be really lucky and spot one of the many parrots and pushbirds. It is so many of them here, but I would wonder if we get lucky. Oh, there they are! This place is honestly filled with life. We are here 5 minutes and spotted many big white cockatoos or kakadoos and red and green parrots. We took a walk to the Wentworth waterfall which looks like a big red blister from a distance. This blister, or rock if you want, has a typical color like many others in Australia. And now we've come to the waterfall and we are standing above it on the rock overhang. And all good things come in threes. The blister again, this time from the opposite side. It's a waterfall, Victor. A waterfall. We continue along the trail dug out in the rocks. The first day in Australia and we fell in love with it over head and ears. The parrots we were staring at in cages and pet shops, banging on the cage and calling them names like Gary and throwing grains on them when we were little kids, are chasing each other on the sky in flocks here. There are so many different paths that you won't come across on anyone on the way. You are looking at the rock formation of the Three Sisters, which was named in honor of the famous Czech band that had a concert here. You are such a prattler, are you? 
This rock is called Three Sisters because it reminds three blisters uh, or characters and it's a sacred place for Aboriginal people, the indigenous people of Australia, whom the colonizers have nearly exterminated. We stand at the Echo Point lookout near Katumba, and I have to say that I have goose skin from that breathtaking view into the local landscape, even though it's 40 degrees in the shade. Well, I'm cold though. You don't have to admire the three sisters only from afar, but you can take a look at their feet pretty close. There is a niche with a bench in the first sister. So you can sit here and philosophize over the meaning of life or how it is possible that the view platform echo point over there with the tourists has not yet collapsed. Shh, listen to the jungle like me. We walked a few hours through the overgrown bush and we got to this cave. But since we were scared, we didn't go inside. But at least you can see how it looks inside of the Blue Mountains. We are afraid of monsters from the cave and we rather go on. See, this is a perfect example of a nice thermid hill. Another stop along the way are the mysterious Janolan Caves, one of the largest in Australia. We really did not expect to get inside by car. Respectively, you have to drive through the cave to get to this uh, magical village. This pond is a dam up river that runs out of the tangle of caves. Meet the golden water dragon. Water dragons are great lizards which sunbath naked at every step here. The lake is also inhabited by a family of duckbills and the specialized jargon platypuses. But they are very shy and they did not come to greet us. Cheeky ignorance. A beautiful specimen of a naked water dragon. Helenka wants to show you how fast is he running and that's why she's going to bother him. They also voluntarily love to swim. All that to please the viewer. You are looking at the Devil's Ark. But honestly, I think it's a very harsh name. I would call it an Ark in the Woods or something like that. You can also enter many caves without a guide. This is how it looks inside one of the huge cave domes. In the stalactite kingdom there are fantastic monsters such as cave owls, lizards and world rarity colony of small cave kangaroos. Over the course of thousands of years living in the caves, local kangaroos learned to see in the dark and jump vertically on the rock we managed to meet one of them. As we have said before, you will come across parrots at every turn. They are so used to people that they have established here a parrot escort service. 
where you can invite a parrot to have a cup of coffee and he will pose in front of the camera with you for a few crumbs. See for yourself. Don't they look much better free than in the cage? Through a eucalyptus bush we carry on. We are heading to Bodhari Aboriginal Reservation and we plan to spend the night in a free Wombat Camp Bandila. We enjoy it when we just drive and there is nothing but a green bush. Occasionally a bird of paradise passes across the road or we pass the Wombat Teddy Bear. You ask what hole in the ground we are showing you here, right? This is a nice apartment of Mr. Wombat, the native inhabitant of Australia. Here we have it in all its beauty. Wombats are little cute teddy bears related to the koalas and you will not meet them elsewhere in the world. A little like a crossbreed of a mouse and a piggy, something like Winnie the Pooh. It is really a lot of them here in the camp and they don't mind the people here at all. At the dusk they climb out of their burrows and feed on the grass. They were scratching themselves so much over our car that night that we thought it was an earthquake. Helenka, <coughs> they were not scratching themselves. Camp Bendila lies in the Kangaroo Valley and is surrounded by wild forests and the river. There is cicadas bus around everywhere. It was interesting to listen to it, because the sound they continuously emitted grew and faded in regular cycles. Listen for yourself! Do you know what's the best here? That Australia is so big and so unpopulated. There is pure nature without rubbish. There are so many wild animals that people protect instead of hurting them. There are so many beautiful places. Now we are going to one of them, to the Tasman Sea. We stopped at Jervis Bay where we had a bath. There were pools in the reefs like made for lunching in the water. We are located in Bodhari Aboriginal Reservation. Well, we have not really seen such a white and fine sand anywhere else yet. Although there are sharks, so it's not advisable to swim too far from the shore. But honestly, it doesn't matter as it's said that they eat just surfers. A rock formation creatively called the hole in the wall. One of the many kangaroos we've encountered. By his body language, he's just telling us what he thinks of us spying on him during a supper. Judging by the amount of buttons on the grass, this guy was already seen by a lot of tourists. We are currently in the national park called Bodhuri. It is quite close to Sydney. It is about 100 kilometers south of it. The location is by the sea and it is just gorgeous here. We meet a lot of big kangaroos and also a bunch of wallabies. Wallabies are a smaller kind of kangaroos, except they are much cuter. The place flourish with birds and colorful parrots. We've also seen an incredible amount of fish in the sea. Local beaches are covered with very fine white sand.
Isn't it much better to meet with animals in the nature than just gaze on them behind the bars in the zoo? We are back in Sydney, where we'll spend the last few days before our departure. And a war hero memorial in Hyde Park is ahead of us. There are flocks of sacred ibises. Would you believe that such an oasis of nature with a lot of animals is right in the center of Australia's largest city? Peter of Virgin Mary standing nearby. Beautiful fountain with the naked sculptures in the center of Hyde Park. Here we have the tallest Sydney building called Tower Eye, with a restaurant on the top. We saw a similar towers in Auckland or Toronto. It's getting dark, and you can see flying bats in the sky, hanging around the trees during the day and breaking through the sky at night. They are such a big bats, they feed on nectar from flowers or drink blood of local homeless people. In the harbor, we've got lost at the berth of the naval ships of the Australian Navy. I wonder if there are some sailors swimming in the pool. The Australia's number one icon, Sydney Opera House. Behind the Opera House is bending just a little less famous harbor bridge. Sydney city center with modern skyscrapers. The Opera House is one of the greatest works of modern architecture. It has a shape of wild waves and is built on a huge pier in the sea. So when you look at it from afar, you feel as it's a part of it. Whether you look at it from any part of the city, it's just perfect from every angle. It's one of the few places that looks in real even better than on the poster. A little while later, an everyday screening of the aboriginal stories of Badugili begins. Opera House serves as a screen. In the underground of the opera, there is an exhibition about how difficult its construction was. A little was enough and it would not have been completed due to lack of money. This funny hen is called the masked lapwing. Interesting colleagues building in botanical gardens. We've just got to an exhibition of live flowers on the subject of pollination. A huge part of the city is the Chinatown, where one can get easily lost in the cluster of the streets. We disentangled ourselves from the Chinatown and continued to explore the city. We have reached Darling Harbor, Sydney's entertainment center. There are plenty of shopping centers and attractions, including an underwater theme park and museum of wax figures. Right now, before Christmas, Sydney is so hot that our souls stick to the road, and so we hit the first air conditioned mall to cool off a bit. We are just at the Cathedral of Our Lady and we just got here on the 3rd Advent Sunday or respectively Christmas Advent Week and let's see what the Christmas celebrations in Sydney look like Christmas in the summer? 
a bit unconventional, isn't it? Baby Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the desert, and now we are in hot Sydney in the middle of summer. Well, it makes sense. But the shining artificial icicles? While walking through the city, we found a lot of other interesting things, like this imaginative roundabout. Intention or accident? Local lads who enjoy themselves, they train their balance on the slackline. It is not easy to keep yourself on it. Respect! Do you see how his muscles work? Oh no, at least he fell into something soft. As we've already said, look at it from any side. It always looks perfect. Gary! Gary! Show me your duck! He doesn't have time. He must win his fight with the flower. The opera house in comparison with the ocean liner looks like a hummingbird beside a turkey. Under the harbor bridge there is preserved city defense system from the Second World War. So this is it. The end of it. In six days we managed quite a bit. Right? We hope you've enjoyed traveling with us and the wild, colorful and vibrant Australia has enchanted you just as us. Thank you for being with us and see you soon again. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, click the subscribe button and never miss our next video. It costs you nothing and it gives us motivation to continue creating.